Let everything he tried to touch, everything he tried to kill, everything he tried to steal, everything he tried to destroy, let it grow exponentially. Sevenfold we decree of everything that ever has been stolen from me. Sevenfold we decree from the moment that we were born, day zero, hey. From the moment that we were born, day zero, to today, the 27th of April, 2024. Anything the enemy ever stole, let it be restored sevenfold. Even if it cost him the contents of his house, that's no matter to us. You will restore sevenfold. Proverbs 631, Father, your word does not return unto you void. 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 It shall take place, it is done. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Christ has already done it. Hey, oh, he's already done it. Oh, it's a new day, a new season. God is doing a new thing in our lives. Isaiah 43 19. He is making rivers and deserts. Hey, doing the impossible, focus on all he's done before, even on today. Those things are coming, they are here. This is an hour. Oh, it's already here. So as you wait to receive, focus on all the things that he's already done. Oh, you are only here today because of him. I am only here today because of him. My life could have been so much different. Oh, I could have been destroyed. I could have been dead. I could have been destroyed. Father, you saved me. Father, you saved your people from a life of sin and destruction and death. Oh, you saved your people from spiritual death. You saved your people, 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 you saved your people. Yeah, you saved me. Oh, yeah. you are doing a new thing, and we perceive it, we see it, we feel it, the sky shines blue, the sky looks even bluer, the sky looks even bluer. The clouds look even wider. The sun is so beautiful. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the natural and in the spiritual, there's a shining sun. The clouds have cleared away. The storm clouds have cleared away. Just like with Noah on the ark. Oh. Destructive rains have stopped. Now there is overflowing of new, 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 new. Overflowing of new, and overflowing of new. Yeah, help you people to see the new. Yeah. 
and for those of you who you're still waiting you're still being processed every day is a new day for you to learn something new to see something new so this new word means something different for you it means something beautiful because when you wait god is pruning you he is removing the dead things so you will experience new things even in your wilderness even in your waiting you will see god in a new way god will show you things you've never seen before god will show you things you've never seen before he will show you people in a new way he will reveal fresh plans to you fresh insights you will find yourself being a new type of humble in your situation it will be different for you it will be different for you hey there is a joy in the processing there is a joy in the wilderness i've seen it I've experienced it. It's when you fully surrender all to God and you say, I know this is temporary. I know this is temporary. So in this temporary, God, what are we doing today? God, what do you have me to do today? And you approach it with a smile, a true smile from your heart. You understand that this is just temporary. And there is something for your God to do, for God to do for you in that temporary. You surrender all, you surrender all. Hey, it's a new day for you, it's a new season for you. What is your season? Your season of surrender, your season of acceptance that God will do it. He will work it out. This is just temporary. There's some fruit he needs to develop in you. And you receive it. That's what makes it beautiful. You know you can't control it. You know there's nothing you can do until you release it. Release your mind. Release your heart. Release everything that only God can control. Don't get in his way. Don't try to fix it. It requires a God solution. Enjoy the processing. Yes, I said, enjoy the processing because there are things you will gather from that season that you will never gather again. Oh, he's depositing wealth into you through your suffering, oh, your story is not just an opportunity to change lives, but God will use these sufferings to create wealth for you, yeah, that's why I said, enjoy it, enjoy how God will show you how he can turn your ashes into beauty. Enjoy what God can show you, that he is all powerful in your situation. Enjoy resting in God's promises, resting in his promises. Enjoy your seclusion, your isolation, because there's an end time for it. And there's some days you might long for that isolation with God. But that season would have passed. Enjoy the rest in him. Because when it ends, you'll be busy. Oh, you'll be busy. I know what it's like to be so anxious for what God's supposed to do. But he says, be not anxious. Surrender it to me. Surrender it to me. Surrender it to me. Surrender it to me. Surrender it to me, surrender it to me, surrender it to me. Hey, the time is coming when you'll be busy and you would have needed that rest that you have now. Mighty God, 
when God has you in processing, when he has you in the wilderness, though the situations around you are so crazy, it will like be, God will have you like in the eye of a hurricane. I've been in the eye of a hurricane before where a hurricane passed over and it's so calm. And the outer rims of the eye are the winds and the rain. But when the eye of the hurricane passes over, it's so calm. So in the midst of your hurricane, once you surrender all to God, for those of you who are still processing in the wilderness, you have a different type of new year experience than from when you come out the wilderness into um, a different season where God is going to take everything he deposited into you from the wilderness and you're going to run forth. It's going to be a Habakkuk 2, right? 2-2 two, two, where it says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it may run with it, okay? And verse 3 talks about though it seems to tarry and delay, it will come. So you are in a Habakkuk 2 verses 2 to 3 in your wilderness. Everybody in their wilderness is in a Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that revelation. Hallelujah. So enjoy the now because when you're in the hurricane, right, and you surrender to God, he puts you in like an eye of the hurricane where there is peace. So everything around you is breaking down. But you know what? You're like, mm -mm. I'm trying to fix everything. Absolutely not. This is a God solution. And I'm going to leave everything to him. When you surrender it all to God, realizing that really God is the only one that will fix that, that can fix that situation as he promised to, which is a Psalms 34, 19, there is a release that comes over you. Because Isaiah 26, 3 says that when we focus on God, that he gives us a peace. And let me tell you, God's peace is far greater than anything you can ever understand. God's peace is so deep, okay? You could be running out of food, but you know God got to come through somehow. You're like, okay, God, do you want me to talk to such and such? Is it going to come this way, that way? But then you leave it to him after you ask him. And you walk away. Just walk away. God is not going to make you die of hunger. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? He's not going to make you die of hunger. He knows that car has to move, that it needs gas, that truck, the car, the vehicle he gave to you. He understands that you have to dwell somewhere. Whether he will maintain you in the place that you are in or he will transfer you to somewhere else. Because a lot of times God in your wilderness, he will release you of financial obligations. Yes, it does mean like, okay, well, I would still have to pay this debt. Yes, but there is no further um, compacting of that debt. So if you owe up to a certain month, yes, you have to pay that, right? God would even have fees waived for you. Hallelujah. But it's not a continuous thing because sometimes, and though we may not like it, when Jesus was born, they went to like the stables. He wasn't born on silk sheets and, and, and stayed there and spent his first night. But even in that, they still had wise men came and honor him and give him gifts. You may not be in the best, beautiful circumstances, but God will still have people gift you. He will still take care of you. Okay? There's a part of the New Testament that says, um, uh, it talks about the Son of Man not having anywhere to rest his head. Let me find it for you. Okay, it's, it's, it's Christ. It's Christ speaking here. And he says in Luke chapter 9, verses 58 to 61, And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me to go first and bury my father. The whole point is this. Jesus was walking a life of faith. Okay? So wherever God took him, he went. And what was provided, he used. Jesus is our example. I'm not saying that you're going to have to be on the street with your kids sleeping by a garbage can. I never said that. I'm saying this to you. Sometimes things may not seem ideal, but God will always provide a way for you to be taken care of. You think God wants it to be so that your testimony is he abandoned you, left you, got locked up, got your kids taken away, and that was that? What kind of God? He's not that kind of God. He's not cruel. The walk of faith, though, can be very intimidating. 
It can be very intimidating. But if you trust God through this, he will make sure you're safe and that you're okay. He will take care of you. And through all the things that you went through, God will restore. I have seen it before. That is what keeps me going. Okay? I have seen God. Listen, when you have seen God, nobody can convince you there's no God. It don't matter. They could say anything they want. But when you have been in terrible circumstances, no matter what those circumstances are, and you have seen God come through and elevate you, woo -hoo, woo, even when he puts you back into testing and refinement, you have that old miracle to look back on. You have it to look back on and say, well, if it's one thing, he did this. And I want you guys to spend today in reflection. I was doing that before I started worship. I was like, God, wow, I was really in a different spiritual place. Last year compared to this year, I was like, there's been certainly growth. And I'm happy for that. Because it was one of my prayers when I entered 2024. I said, spiritually, I cannot be doing the same things I did last year. There has to be growth. And I've seen the growth because of God. Growth in my faith and trust. Yes, I agree. There are things that sometimes come up and you're like, oh my gosh, it's intimidating. Even though God worked miracles in the past, right? You can see this even in the scripture, though it's not exactly the same. Jesus healed so many people and he brought Lazarus back from the dead and did all these wonderful things, but they still wanted to crucify him, which by the way, was part of the plan anyway. But the whole point is human nature. We have a human nature. I'm not saying we want to cruci crucify Jesus, no. I'm saying in our human nature, sometimes we tend to forget what God did already. Because we forget what he did already, we become worried and we stressed out, right? We stress about it, but the truth, and that's part of refinement. God is revealing, but we still need to work on this area and he understands. And that's why Lamentations 3, 22 to 23 says that he, his mercies are new every morning and he's faithful. So Father, I ask you for new mercies for every single one of us, your people. Hallelujah. Even for those who don't find this worship, new mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those, Father, who are in the world lost like we were, Father, because you said you make the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. For those who, you, who will answer that call, even though they haven't yet, but you know the future, they will answer. I pray new mercies for them. And I pray, Father, in their journey to answering your call, Father, that you surround them with people, places, and things that will sow seeds of righteousness in their heart, in Jesus' name, because we were once there. So new mercies for all of us. Hallelujah. So whether you have just exited the wilderness, right? Because that's the case for some of us in the body of Christ, and whether you have, are still in the wilderness, because that's the case for other, others of us in the body of Christ, right? We are all one body. Some of us have are in a new where God is like you've been through all this right and I'm gonna do this now and some of some of us are in a, a processing okay where he's depositing the things in you so that you can be where where some of the people are now it's all a process there's no rush there's no competition this is where you are everybody is in a different place and sometimes groups of people are in similar places the whole point is this it's a new day, a new day to take a new perspective and approach on your situation, surrendering it all to God, saying, you know what, God, I'm going to just let you work it out. Father, for those of us, all of us who are, have kept our mind on the things, Father, that will, people will naturally care about, the needs, things that have to be done, things that are scary, Father, help us to take our eyes off of those things and put it instead on you, your kingdom, your righteousness the way you want us to be, the way you want us to praise you, the way you want us to pray for people and ourselves, the, the way you're showing us, hey, I have a purpose for you. Work on this book, write in your journal. Let us focus on those things of the kingdom and your righteousness, according to Matthew 6, and be confident, like you said, because your word does not return unto you void, that these things will be added unto us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So it is done. Be encouraged, y'all. I love you with the love of Christ. Bye-bye.